so we are going to talk about Euler characteristic. Euler characteristic for a two dimensional surface is given as vertices minus edges plus faces. And we want to generalize this to higher dimensions. So let us write it down for two dimensional complex. So vertices minus edges plus faces. For an example, we will uh, write about the sphere S2. So S2 is equivalent to this uh, tetrahedron. Fill the air in tetrahedron and it will become a sphere. It has four vertices, six edges and four faces. So, so the sum is two. So we want to generalize this as above. So we will write Euler characteristic as summation of uh, over i equals to 1 to n or i equals to 0 to n a, a i or like a 0 minus a 1 plus a 2 and so on. Yeah, alternating signs of plus and minus. So this is number of vertices that is dimension of c 0. This is number of edges dimension of c 1. This is dimension of c2, a3 is dimension of c3. Now the theorem which we want to cover in this slide is this. So instead of summing over dimensions that alternating sum over dimensions of complexes, we instead write the dimension of the homology group. Yeah. So the important result we will use is this. So if you have an exact sequence like this of ABC, then dimension of B equals to dimension of A plus dimension of C. So you can write this as dimension or rank. Yeah. So notice the chain complex. So chain complex, our chain complex goes down like this. Yeah. So this is standard. Now this chain complex is not exact, a short exact sequence like ABC. So in order to use dimension result, we have to make this into a short exact sequence. So the way to do is, is this. So zeros inject into CI and CI then goes into CI minus one, which is just the boundary map. Yeah. So this is pretty clear. So you take CI out. So ZI, the kernel belongs to it. So now we apply the lemma above. Yeah, so everything is clear here. Now we want to introduce the dimension of the homology group. So obviously homology group is nothing but zero over the boundary. Yeah, first I'm going to write that homology group is nothing but zeros over the boundary pi plus one. So we have to somehow relate this. So obviously now the sequence will be zero to bi plus one to zi and then to hi. Yeah. So let us write down the sequence. Yeah, this goes into ZI, this goes into HI, this goes to zero. Yeah, so this is this is pretty clear. So dimension of so A zero is what? This is just dimension of dimension of C zero is nothing but dimension of C zero because there is no B minus one. What about A one? A1 is dimension of C1, which will be dimension of Z1 plus dimension of B0. I'm just expanding the term now. So what is A2? It is dimension of Z2 plus dimension of B1. A3 dimension of Z3 plus dimension of B2. We are all using this chain 0 to Z1, Zi to Ci to Bi minus 1 to 0. Now I'm just going to rearrange the terms. So dimension of Z0 minus dimension of B0. Now you can see dimension of Z0 minus dimension of B0 is nothing but dimension of H0. 
and so on yeah z1 minus dimension of b1 so in dimension of z2 minus dimension of b2 so this is dimension of h0 then minus dimension of h1 plus dimension of h2 and so on and that gives us the required theorem I want to talk about examples of Euler characteristic the simplest example is that of a disk so that will be the number one example and uh, as you know the disk is homotopically equivalent to a point you know deformation retracts to a point so only h0 is there and that is just one second is sphere now sphere we have only two groups h0 and hn and uh, so yes yeah, so first we get h0 and then we have to add hn to it but the sign could be positive or negative so what is it obviously if n is odd it will be zero and for n even it will be two uh, notice that at the start of the oil characteristic we gave an example of s2 so similarly uh, compute the homology groups of rpn and then add them up with appropriate signs and we get the following result now all the characteristic of CPN now CPN is uh, pretty straightforward you know everything exists in even dimensions and because of that one adds up yeah so you add up for all the cells all the even dimension cells you add up and you get n plus one so let us say a space x which is completely covered by a union b so just like in probability um, we can use inclusion exclusion formula to prove this exactly like we do in probability the probability of x is probability of a plus probability of b minus probability of a intersection b so the inclusion exclusion formula you apply to the CW complexes. Now here we will try to prove it differently. Uh, say you are given a meyer weitora sequence. You just write the meyer weitora sequence associated with uh, A union B equals to X. Yeah, so this is the meyer weitora sequence. And it goes all the way down. You hit decrease index by 1 we go all the way down to h 0 x obviously for higher dimensions it will be 0 if you exceed the dimension of x now uh, this will immediately prove the above all the characteristic formula if we use the following result from linear algebra so we have a following exact chain yeah the kernel is equal to image this exact chain of vector spaces then this holds you sum it over its dimensions alternating sign and what you get is zero so you use this formula for the meyer weitorex sequence and you get polar characteristic of x is polar characteristic of a plus b minus a intersection b or you can simply use the way you use probability now let us talk about sheeted coverings so suppose there is a space given to you yeah this space has n sheet cover on it yeah and uh, we are given a space we have to triangulate it and uh, we are only talking about cw complexes here so you triangulate the space and you have n sheets which cover it so i'm drawing sheet one which will have exactly the same number of simplices of the base sheet and then sheet two and this construction can go on for sheet n so you notice that the number of simplices in the cover is exactly n times the base yeah these are n sheets i've only drawn two but you can imagine the n here so let us say the space is b the covering space and the base space is a so the number of simplices in b is precisely n times the number of simplices in a and therefore uh, all the characteristic of B is n times all the characteristic of A. Yeah, it is just you just add up over all the homology groups which are associated with the simplices. 
and that is pretty much it